Hey everyone, it's Jesse G here, your host for Jesse's Hangout. This is season two, episode three. Welcome, welcome. If you are new to the episode, or, or new to this episode, or you happen to come across this episode and you're new to all of this, um, this is a open topic series where I just talk about all sorts of things. Um, Jesse's Hangout has always been about uh, open topic things I talk about all sorts of things even things that are on my mind or even sometimes it's usually personal things it just really depends on um what's going on if it's the holidays or whatever but anyways if you are interested in this podcast series and you're interested in my content and you want to see more hit that red subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be notified as to when I upload videos in the future and you guys don't miss out on anything. Before the show starts, I'm going to read off a couple things. You guys have already seen them before the show starts, but I'm going to read them off again. So it gives you guys another time to um, consider, take all of this into consideration again before the show starts and we get into today's topic. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act. 1976 allowances made for fair use for purposes such as comment criticism news reporting teaching scholarship education and research fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be interfering nonprofit personal or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use age restriction warning this episode is for mature audience only viewer discretion is advised if you are under the age of 18, this episode may not be for you. Highly recommend parents' permission and that they watch this episode with you if you choose to listen to this episode at your own discretion. I added that part in. Trigger or sensitive warning. Trigger and sensitive warning, excuse me. If you are triggered or sensitive to any of these topics that are going to be talked about in this episode, do not listen to this episode. If you choose to listen to this episode at your own discretion, I highly recommend you listen to this episode with someone, like your emotional support system, your significant other, somebody you love and trust enough that will sit down with you and help you through the triggering and sensitive moments of today's topic. Um, anyways, also, if you were wondering why you see all of these in this episode is mainly for safety reasons for my viewers and for me as well. It is for well as well for my channel. Um, and I want to be respectful of everybody. I know it's annoying. I know it's a pain in the butt. And I know that you guys are old enough. Some of you are old enough to make your own decisions. But you just never know who's watching my episodes. I have an idea as to who watches my episodes. But you just never really know. Um, I don't really pay attention to the age ranks that watch this, but you just never know. You know, you could be a parent listening to this episode and your child could be in the room listening to it uh, eavesdropping or something. You just, you just never know. So I'm being careful and as cautious and respectful to you guys as well as for myself and um, as well for the channel and for Jesse's Hangout. Um, Jesse's Hangout has always been a safe place to talk about everything. I've always said it in all of my episodes, so that's the reason for this. But anyways, enough of my babbling. <laughs> Today's episode is the second half of the Spooky October Month episode. Um, today's episode is the Paranormal episode. So I'm going to read a couple of stories uh, to you guys, but before I do that, I have a little something I want to speech I want to give out before we start this. The paranormal has been talked about for years. Many investigators have witnessed the unexpected and the horrifying. There are some that are skeptic about the paranormal and there are some that believe in the unexplained. Today I'm going to tell you about some stories, some very strange and horrifying stories I should say. Um, that people have encountered with the paranormal and the unexpected. So the first story is uh, first. This is called It Wasn't a Girl. This is about, I'm going to kind of give you a Cliff Notes version and then we'll read the whole thing. 
Cliff Notes version is this is a woman and her husband and her family. They're a group of 10 people. They end up going to camp, going camping, and then there's a group of six people in the camp next to them. And things get a little crazy and a little spooky, and uh, this is what happened. It was, I was camping with my husband and his family at a small remote lake in New Mexico. There were about 10 people in our group and another group of six people in the next campsite. It was, an, it was nighttime and both groups were doing typical activities, making s'mores and having a few drinks and telling stories. When all of this, when we all heard what we sound, what sounded like a little girl yelling out for help, neither group had children with them. Meaning they, this was a family event, but it was also a no children thing because, you know, they wanted to be able to drink and tell spooky stories without scaring the kids or without having any issues, which that's totally understandable because you wouldn't want to have any issues or anything like that. That would be really bad. You know, you don't want to scare kids. So that's what they were doing until they heard that. But we were positive we were hearing a little girl and decided to search the area we heard the noise from together. So for gathering from this story, gathering from what I read it when I was looking them up, they basically went to go investigate what was going on. They heard this little girl uh, and they didn't know if it was actually a little girl or not, but they were going to invest, they were going to do their investigation of their own. Now, with that said, before I get into the rest of this, if you're ever dealing with the paranormal, it's always interesting to want to try to figure out what it is. But I highly recommend, and this is just from my point of view, and you know, you could call me crazy or whatever you wish to call me, but this is just from what I've read and from what I've learned over the years and just, you know, being somebody who is, I'm just going to come right out and say it, I'm a believer of the paranormal. I know that there's things that we can't explain and that they're out there and it happens now the one thing you definitely don't want to do is go investigate the noise unless you hear unless it gives you a reason to go investigate it now I, I, I it was a good idea that they did it together that they're going to investigate this noise together but I highly recommend you if if you find it and you happen to see it, don't get close to it, don't acknowledge it, don't um, get aggressive with it, don't get angry, don't do anything, especially if you're a person that doesn't quite understand it or really is a person that just doesn't know what you're doing, in other words. So with that said, let's get into the rest of the story before I babble too long. There was a field behind our campsite, and we saw a very tall, pure white figure standing maybe a hundred feet away from us in the field, making the noise. We all agreed this thing looked maybe six feet tall, skinny and white, as can be. We made our way closer to investigate, but whatever it was, it was whatever it was that we saw, started backing off as we got closer to it. And it disappeared into the trees. All night, we continued to hear the little girl calling for help as we tried to sleep. Okay. So... You know, sometimes people like to play typical games on people, and, you know, sometimes that happens. But judging by what this was, and, you know, judging by from what they've seen, and, you know, be, you could be a skeptic, you could say whatever you want to, but that's your choice, and that's fine. Um, but, you know... I think they did see something, and it's like I said before I got into the last part. If you're investigating a paranormal or something happening, and you happen to see it, and you, you and you don't know exactly what it is, 
You should never really go after it. You should never really get close to it. Even though it might be the strangest thing you've ever seen in your life, but you really don't want to get close to it. It's okay to film it or take pictures to have proof, you know, I can see that. But I would highly recommend I wouldn't get close to it if I was you. But I can say that had to have been really one heck of a night to be hearing that all night. It makes me wonder if this thing was an evil entity and it was just mocking this little girl's voice or something and it was driving them crazy. And you know, that that could be that could be the case. It could happen. Who knows? Okay, this next story. Now this story is a bit strange, but it's not unheard of. Um, this is your typical stories you would normally hear. Anytime that there is history involving a mental health, a residential mental health facility, or a mental health hospital, or an asylum of any sorts, if there is a story that is involving it, good or bad, you're going to experience some pretty strange stuff, even when it's abandoned and the building's still there. And there's a lot of uh, there is a lot of abandoned asylums throughout the United States, and you've already seen some of the Ghost uh, Avengers and some other uh, people go and investigate those places, and they've had their own personal encounters with it. Now this one is a bit strange. This one I'm still kind of scratching my head with, so I'm gonna go ahead and read it before I get any further into this discussion. And you guys kind of make your own assumptions about what you think. I'm a psychiatric nurse and early in my career I worked at a residential mental health facility. One of our residents was a evictive mute, if I'm saying it right. Which means that he did not, would not, could not talk. But there was no medical reason as to why he, he had medical reason as to why he had spoken earlier in his life and in fact it seemed quiet back uh, quite normal back when with the uh, expansion of him being close to seven feet tall if I'm saying all this right bear with me um, seven feet tall he had been raised in the deep south and joined the military he was when he was 19 oh but one night he vanished. He was declared AWOL. And eventually he was declared missing and dead. Now we're flashing forward 10 years later. 10 years later, a seven foot tall man walked into a VA hospital emergency room in the part of the Midwest and said to the rep. Uh, the representative or the uh, receptionist, I should say. Um, he said, and, this, and mind you, the story is not going to have anybody's real name. If anybody uses anybody's name, um, they're going to make up a name to not use the real name because of being respectful to the family and to not have any lawsuits against them or anything like that. I just want to put that out there. Okay, so she calls them. He calls him Marion uh, Aducci, uh, was his name, but it's not his real name. And I've been dead for 10 years. Those were the last words he ever spoke. Whoa. He was covered with dust and he was wearing the same clothes he had been reported to be wearing the night he vanished. His social security number had not been used and he had no identification on his person. However, they were able to identify him, I guess, via fingerprints, meaning they took his fingerprints and ran it through the national and, and the criminal and all those databases to find out who he was. The family was notified, but they had already grieved their lost man and that whomever was claiming to be him simply could not be him. They demanded not to be contacted again. Marion uh, paced all day, every day, moving his mouth that looked like he was muttering, but no sound came out. 
he <laughs> no sound came out. Now that's creepy. He had been a he had a unnerving habit of throwing his head back with his mouth wide open as if he was laughing hardly, but not even a breath could be heard if he talked if you talk if I talked to him sorry. If I talked to him he reply he appeared to he appreciated to listen um productively throwing his head back and throwing his head back in laughter, mocking, making, mocking his way, a uh, mocking way of his, I should say. Sorry, that was a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> so I'm going to stop there. So basically, this man, this Marion, um, what's his name? Marion, that um, happened to have went missing when he became a patient and he was the military person. He joined the military when he was 19. So, I'm assuming this guy is probably in his 40s or probably late 50s or so. Maybe in his 30s, who knows. But we don't really know his date of birth, but just from the sounds of it, he has to be a, a, an older man or something like that. And apparently, judging from what we read so far, he went missing and then was declared dead. And all of a sudden, 10 years later, this strange unknown person shows up claiming to be this person that went missing or was declared dead. And then when she contacted or when they contacted the relatives of this person, of Marion, um, they didn't want to have anything to do with this person that, was, that they thought was claiming to be him or impersonating him. Now, whether he was... The guy that went missing or not, we do not know um, whether it was him or not. Who knows? They found out through his fingerprints who he was. Now, who knows exactly what was going on? I mean, he, this man was found in the same exact clothes he wore 10 years ago. So something had to have went down. He was covered in dust, and he was he, he would think he would be a lot more covered. You would think there would be something more wrong with him or something. You would think he would look a bit more shaggier than that. So who knows exactly what happened to him. And who knows uh, what he was doing those 10 years. Who knows. Um, on to the rest of this. Various medications were tried. But they did not affect him. Either positively or negatively. Occupational therapy did nothing. Because Marion would just grin. Unless told to stay put. He, he, he'd get up and start pacing again. So basically, he would pace the floor, which that's even more strange. On my last day of the job, on that at that job, the last thing I saw was Marion pacing the parking lot, throwing his head back to laugh. Later, I wondered if all along I'd been dealing with the ghosts. All these years, I did not know. My theory is this. Yeah, it might have been the guy that walked in, and it might have been him, but it could have been an imposter. Who knows? My theory is, is I think that there was something attached to him. And on the last day of her job, she saw him pacing the parking lot. Now, it's very, it's very likely that he might have passed away in that hospital finally. Something might have taken him and he might have just been and finally been a spirit that was still pacing and doing what he was doing. Who knows? Or they might have just let him go voluntarily, which I highly doubt that, but who knows? You know, who knows exactly what that was? Um, this next one is pretty funny, but really scary. And this just goes to show that. You should never um, approach something or acknowledge a ghost or acknowledge a, 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 an entity or a spirit or any of the sorts. Um, excuse me, sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and read this off. We were, dri we were driving my friend's really old beat-up Sudan through the massive graveyard. Well, that was even more crazy and dumb. <laughs> going through a massive graveyard at night, really. 
We stopped and walked down a hill and came across a little pond. There was someone sitting on a rock on the other side of the pond. The figure was all black and we could not make out any features other than the fact that he, other than the fact that it looked like the man who was wearing some old style hat. He, uh, we stupidly waved and shouted hi. <laughs> yeah, that was really stupid. <laughs> he didn't show any acknowledgement or continue sitting on or, and continue sitting on the rock. All of a sudden, he jumped to his feet and started running toward running to us on the water, and then vanished in the thin water about halfway up on the pond. My friends and I screamed and ran back to the car. Uh oh, this is where it gets really scary. This is the the other reason why you should never acknowledge an entity no matter what you shouldn't even you you should you just ignore it and move on about your business because if you ever acknowledge an evil entity or any type of entity you're going to regret it and it's going to get nasty and not good things will happen and apparently this group of uh peop this group of guys obviously our group of friends obviously didn't know that. But I'm pretty sure they learned their lesson the hard way after this. After y'all hear this, you'll see why. The car wouldn't start. And we heard something banging on the back of the car. It wasn't a consistent bang, but every few seconds we would hear it. Nobody outside from what we could see in the dark, but something was making a noise on the car. I opened my phone and started dialing my mom to come give us a boost, but had no service. None of us had any cell service. The next 30 minutes we spent trying to get the car started. No banging was heard afterwards, but we felt this heavy pressure around us. Finally, the car started and she hit the pedal to the metal. We sped out of the graveyard so fast, immediately crossed to the gate of all Immediately across the, the gate, all of our phones ring cell service. One thing I do know for certain is that someone or something was out there and it was not an animal or a human. See, that's why you should never mess with that stuff. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys will form your own theories as to... Um, as to what you think these people saw or what they went through but um and i hope you guys heed my advice that you should never whether you're skeptic or not you should never 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 acknowledge or say anything or even make an exception to know when a spirit is there if you hear a knocking just ignore it don't say anything uh find ways to look up something and find ways to tell it to leave you alone and then go back to normal. I wouldn't even say that as far as that, but be careful. If you ever acknowledge something dark, be careful. Don't acknowledge it. Go on about your business. Because if you get scared and you let it know it, you let it know that you know it's there, it's going to continue to pick on you. Now, if you ignore it and you go on about your business, usually it will subside. But if you're in a house that has a lot of negative energy, I highly suggest you seek help if you ever encounter something like they did. But anyways, enough of my babbling about that. <laughs> Miss, Miss uh, Paranormal Investigator over here. Just kidding, I'm really not. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys stayed throughout the whole series. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of today's episode as well. And um, stay tuned for part three, or part four, sorry. Stay tuned for part three or part four, whichever one of the parts of the next spooky October episode. Um, if you guys, again, if you guys are new to this channel or you're interested in um, seeing more of my content, please don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and that notification bell. I'll also leave this video a, a, a thumbs up and a like. Um, comment below what you guys' theory is on this. Um, I'd be really curious as to see what you guys think. Also, if you wish to stay up to more uh, date with everything and uh, just want to uh, see more of what's going on, 
in my neck of the woods. <laughs> uh, follow me on all of my social medias. They're listed under the, uh, in the description box below this episode. I hope you guys have an awesome night, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are watching or listening to this from. And I will catch you all in my next episode. Laters.